This in a sense is the one gives you the enlightenment. As I told you yesterday, the light has innocence, but this is innocent without knowledge. But your light is innocent with knowledge. We always think that the people who have got knowledge can never be innocent, can never be simple. And the idea we have got about innocence is that an innocent person is always deceived, can be befooled, and can be always taken for granted. But innocence is a power it is a power which protects you, which gives you light of knowledge. <coughs> knowledge that we have in the worldly sense is how to exploit others, how to cheat others, how to make money out of them, how to make fun of others, how to look down upon others. But the light of innocence is the light by which you know that love is the highest thing. And it teaches you how to love others, how to care for others, how to be gentle about others. It also gives you the light within. It's just the other way now of the avidya that we have in this world. Just the other way now. The avidya outside teaches us competition, how to put the other person down, because it has fear. It is insecure. This knowledge is not secure at all. If it had security, it would not have behaved like this. But the light of innocence knows everything. It has no fear. When we say children are innocent, we mean to say that they have that power of innocence. Many times people have noticed if a child falls from a height, he doesn't die. Why a young man may die with a much smaller height. And the child is not afraid while falling, he just enjoys as if, <laughs> as if there's a parachute coming down you know, nicely. And then when he falls down also just gets up, laughs, smiles at everyone. He doesn't understand why everybody is worried. Because in that innocence he knows that he is looked after, he is protected. He knows that there is a power which is much higher than him and he does not have to worry. Then we start putting ideas into the head of the child. And that is how he starts losing his power of innocence and he becomes a coward, he becomes a cunning fellow, he becomes an unrighteous personality. But still we would say that the innocence of children is innocence of ignorance. in a way, because they do not know the dangers of life. But the light of innocence 
knows all the dangers and also knows how to get rid of it, also knows how to be away from such a person. There was a wise man <coughs> who was going on a staircase. And there was a stupid man coming from the other side, a foolish man. So foolish people are always aggressive, that is one of the signs, because they have inferiority complex. So the foolish man says to the man who was coming up, he says, one had to move on one side. So he says, I don't move for fools, the foolish one says. So the wise man says, I do, and he moved. <laughs> That's how the light of innocence tells you how far to go with a person, how far to talk to a person, how far to indulge in another person's uh, personality or his problems, otherwise he deceits. He understands that this gentleman is a stupid fool, so I move for a fool like that. He doesn't pay attention to such a person. He doesn't bother about such a person. This is the light of innocence which gives you discrimination. How far to go with others? I love a person, there are many, I love him, all right. Another person may kick you, may hit you, may trouble you, may become absolutely horribly uh, possessed, but still you are just mad out in love with that person without any self-respect. This comes because there is no... You, are, you may be innocent in a way, in a worldly manner, but you are not enlightened and innocent. When you are enlightened and innocent, then your innocence is a power which gives you first thing is discretion. Supposing you take a light in your hand, now you know whether it is a snake or a rope, but if there is no light in your hand, you cannot see. But even supposing it's a snake, you might run away. Or if you are a stupid fool, you will say, all right, come and bite me. I would like to see how it works. <laughs> but if you are an enlightened person, then you will tell the snake, now let me be alone, all right, bye-bye. <laughs> and the snake will know and it will go away. Or if the snake is a sinister one, you may just look at the snake and the snake might run out. So this power of innocence is a very, very important thing and that comes to us through our enlightenment alone. <coughs> so we are, say, in a state which is ignorant and innocent innocent and ignorant. Then people are no more innocent nor ignorant, but they are not enlightened. They become cunning. If they don't have both the qualities, they are neither ignorant, so-called they have got knowledge, they are good at everything, they are uh, well-known people for their intelligence, brilliance, everything, so they are knowledgeable, so-called. So such people we could call as the people who have got the knowledge in the worldly sense, but they have no innocence. So they start devising methods, the innocence which is there, which puts a little control over such a mind, is lost, because they think innocence is stupid, you know, they don't respect their innocence. So they start maneuvering people, uh, doing violent things, doing harmful things, saying nasty, sarcastic things, all these things the brain starts working. 
because it cannot get back to its innocence. So we don't like such people later on, we don't want them. Then they develop ideas that we are uh, higher people, we are chosen people, we are better people, then they develop all these ideas. Then they all of them club together. So ignorance is added as a so-called knowledge, you see. Inside is completely ignorance, outside is knowledge. And added up, added up like that, they do not want to seek there inside and they are satisfied with their outside so-called knowledge. And they go ahead with it and once they break their heads then they realize, Oh God, what was it? Inside is all darkness. We cannot live with all the windows closed hermetically and the sun shining outside. We have to have light inside to see for ourselves what are we, what are our powers, how far we can go, how we are working out ourselves, our lives, our aims. 